Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Stability, Level 5 Feedback. Um, if you want to control a system and keep it stable over time, number one, you have to define what the system is, but you will always have to change the system a little bit before you eventually get it stable. And so you have to, for example, we're going to be looking at an iron, you have to increase the heat before you eventually reach a set point. And a way to do that is using system feedback. And so the object that represents uh, stability and change is going to be this object. We want whatever it is, the temperature or the speed or like the glucose level in you to change, but eventually it reaches a point where it becomes stable. And so after watching this video, you should be able to identify and create feedback loops for objects like uh, the filling of your toilet using a ball cock valve or even in thermoregulation. How do you, what do you do if you get too hot or what do you do if you get too cold as a system? I'm going to start by showing you my thinking around feedback just using this waxing iron and then when I'm done you'll do the same thing with cruise control. So let me clean this up and then get started. Okay, so first of all, we're going to use this. It's a waxing iron. You could just use any kind of iron, but uh, iron. But this is one that you use to wax your skis, so it has to have a specific temperature, so measured in degrees Celsius. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine what the system is. And then we should think a little bit about how this works. Like any iron, you plug it in, so there's electricity. In the bottom, there's going to be a heating element, and that heating element is going to heat it up. The other thing that you have in here is a thermostat, so you can turn it to a specific temperature, and then you're going to set that temperature. And so what I'm going to do is show you my thinking just around this waxing iron. The first thing we have to think about is how do we change the system? Because it's really cold right now and I'm not gonna be able to wax much if it's really, really cold. So let's think about the system itself and how do we change the system. So what I'm thinking about here, if this is the system here, this is the iron, a way to think about it is what do I want from the iron? So I want a temperature. And so how can I get that? Well, I can get that by adding a heating element, so heat from a heating element. So we could think of this as an input and we can think of this as an output. As I increase the amount of the heating element, I'm going to increase the temperature. And what's that going to do? It's going to change this. And so what's going to happen is as I turn the heater on, it heats it up and we have a higher temperature. And so it's going to change over time. You can see the problem here. It's going to heat it more and it's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter and eventually it's going to be too hot. And so this is a changing system but it doesn't get to a stable system until we build some kind of a feedback loop back in. So there has to be something that's feeding back from the output so the iron has a sense of what the temperature is so it can, so it can modify that. So let me add a few new terms. So what we have now is a feedback loop and so there's a sensor built into the iron and what it's going to do is it's going to sense the temperature. So it's sensing the temp. It's then going to send that signal to a controller. The controller, a way to think about that is it's just basically controlling the heating element. And so we can think of that as a thermostat. So inside here, I have a thermostat in the iron. It's sensing the temperature of the iron, and then it's determining what to do with the heating element. And so what you have to have a feedback loop is we have to have some kind of a set point. So let's say that I want the set point to be, uh, let's just make this 120 degrees Celsius. If the thermostat is set at 120 degrees Celsius, what will happen is it's going to heat the iron, the temperature is going to increase, let's say it goes up to 100 degrees, the sensor will sense that, but since the temperature is less than 120 degrees, it's going to keep heating this up. Eventually the temperature is going to get to 120 degrees and that's going to signal the element, so if we think of this as a signal to the element, is that it's going to turn off the element. There's going to be negative control on the element. And so what do we call this? We call this negative feedback. 
And so the sensor is sensing it until it reaches a set point, and then it's going to turn this off, and so this is going to be a negative. If this was a positive feedback, we might have a loop where it senses the temperature, and if the temperature is this, it turns the element up even hotter, so it doubles the temperature, so we could have a positive feedback loop. You can see that would be a really bad idea. It would burn your house down because the temperature would kind of go out of control. And so this is a simple negative feedback loop. What is it doing? It's essentially taking a changing system and making it a stable system. So let me clear this off and I'm going to give you a chance to do some thinking around a different system. Okay, for the next example we're going to use automobile cruise control. Uh, the way that works is if you're driving a car you can hit a set point so it gets the speedometer gets to a set speed you hit a button and then the car will maintain that speed. If it goes slower than that speed it'll speed up if it goes faster than that speed then it's going to slow down. So let me uh, put this to the side and define the system. So the system is going to be a car with cruise control. So what I'd like to have you do is put together a system where we have the system, what comes into the car, what comes out of the car to change the speed, and then build in a feedback loop that works as cruise control. So pause the video. I've got some thinking slides below to show me what you're thinking. And then you can unpause the video, come back, and we'll see how our thinking compares. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is define the system, which in this case is the car. And the next thing I think, I think about is what are the inputs in the car and what are the outputs of the car? What do we want to happen and then how can we control that happening? So let me write those out. So in this case, the input is going to be the gas, gas to the engine, which causes the car to speed up. And so what we would call that is a changing system. As we add more gas, the car goes faster, the car goes faster, the car goes faster. So you can see this is going to go out of control. So what we want to do is we have to change the system to make it a more stable system. So we have to bring a feedback loop in. And so let me write out that feedback loop. Okay, now we've got a feedback loop. So we have a sensor that can just be the speedometer in the car that's measuring the speed of the car. We then have a cruise control. Let's say the cruise control is set at 75 miles an hour. And so now the gas is gonna increase the speed of the car. That constant speed will be read by a sensor which loops back to the cruise control. If you're going less than 75 miles an hour, you're gonna increase the amount of gas that goes into the engine and that's going to increase the speed but eventually you're going to get to 75 miles an hour and we're going to turn that off and so eventually it's turned off and so we would call this a negative feedback loop what a negative feedback loop does is allows us to maintain a stable uh, a stable system. In this case, it would be a stable speed of the car. So this is me showing you feedback uh, in, a, in a car. After you've done this, there's some thinking slides below and you could show how a feedback loop is used in a ball cock valve in a toilet or you could even look at how we've got feedback loops in uh, thermoregulation, how your body maintains temperature. So that's feedback. Again, super important as we maintain stable systems. This is thinking in stability and change. Uh, lesson six, feedback, and I hope that was helpful.